People in the United Kingdom are still coming to terms with the outcome of the referendum on EU membership. Um, it's very early uh, and it's difficult to know precisely when and how the Brexit process will actually work and how it will unfold. Um, but at this preliminary stage, there are five uh, quite fundamental points that it's worth uh, making. The first, and in, in some ways the most immediately important, is that the UK is still a member of the European Union. And although it may not feel like it, uh, in a sense, it's still business as usual. Um, European Union law still applies in the UK. European Union citizens still have the right to live and work in Britain. British citizens still have the right to live and work in the European Union. And the 1972 European Communities Act, which gives effect in British law to EU law, is still in force. So all of those arrangements uh, will continue until, secondly, that the UK actually extracts itself from its obligations under the EU treaties. There are different ways in which that might happen, but the obvious way for it to happen is for Britain to use the particular part of the treaty, Article 50, uh, which is designed for precisely uh, this set of circumstances. So the way in which Article 50 works is that a member state that has decided it wants to leave the uh, EU gives notice to the European Council and at that point a two-year period starts to run. The idea is that that two-year period gives the departing member state and the EU and the remaining member states a time to negotiate the terms of the uh, departure. If they reach agreement before the end of the two years, then the uh, exit can happen early. If they haven't reached agreement by the end of the two years, then unless they agree to extend negotiations, at that point the treaties simply stop applying to the departing state. And so at that point, if there wasn't an agreement, there would be a sort of hard Brexit where the UK would simply uh, be uh, out of the EU and in that sense that would be uh, the end of the matter. That leads on to a third question, which is when and how will this process be kicked off? And here the position is um, difficult to predict because there's no legal requirement under European Union law for Britain to trigger the Article 50 process. Simply because we've had a referendum with a particular outcome, that doesn't in itself start off that two-year negotiation period. Equally, there's nothing in British law that requires the government to begin negotiations or press the button to trigger the Article 50 uh, process. And that's because the legislation that um, allowed the referendum to happen doesn't say anything about the consequences of the referendum. And in that sense, it's purely advisory. So there's no legal requirement either under European law or under British law for the UK to start off this negotiation uh, period. But of course it's very hard to imagine how it could be politically possible for the UK not to do that. And the Prime Minister has clearly indicated uh, that the will of the people uh, is to be uh, implemented. But that still leaves a question as to when this would happen. And it's certainly possible, legally, for the UK to bide its time. It may want to wait for a short time while it begins to think about its negotiating strategy. It may want to wait another three months or so until a new Prime Minister is in office. There might be pressure from the European Union to speed things up and to get things started. And the President of the European Council has said that he expects the UK to start this process as soon as possible. But there's nothing that the European Union can legally do to require it to start. So that's to do with the international law side of things. 
The fourth point is about domestic law. There has been talk about unilateral action being taken, so that, for example, the European Communities Act might be amended or even repealed, so that even before the UK's treaty obligations end, European Union law would stop applying, or would stop applying with full force, in the UK. That's something that is legally possible as a matter of domestic law. If our Parliament passed legislation like that, then if it was clear enough, our courts would implement it. But that would be highly inadvisable. Until the process of ending Britain's treaty obliga obligations runs its course, the UK will remain bound in international law by those obligations. Trying to sort the problems out unilaterally on a domestic level would place UK and EU law on a collision course while Britain was still a member. And that would be in nobody's interests. For one thing, it would cause serious reputational damage because Britain would be repudiating international obligations that were still binding on it. It would also overlook the need for a measured and orderly withdrawal at a time of immense instability. But that said, the European Communities Act will need to be repealed once the treaty obligations have ceased to bite. And alongside that, there will be the larger, almost infinitely large task of disentangling 40 years' worth of European law from British law. That will be a Herculean effort that will take years rather than months. The fifth and final point I want to mention is not to do with the European Union, but with the union that the four constituent nations of the UK sit in together. The First Minister of Scotland has said that the referendum outcome makes clear that the people of Scotland see their future as part of the European Union. If that's so, then the implication must be that they don't see their future as part of the UK. And the likelihood of a second Scottish independence referendum is now very much greater. It's highly likely, the First Minister has said. And there's no room for compromise here, because however flexible the British Constitution might be, it isn't so flexible that it can accommodate bits of the UK staying in the EU and bits of the UK coming out. Only states can be members of the EU, and the UK's constituent nations can only acquire statehood if they first leave the UK itself. Like I said at the beginning, these are very early days. Events are moving very quickly and inevitably quite unpredictably. But even allowing for that, it's no exaggeration to say that the vote to leave the EU represents a tangible existential threat to the UK as a state. And for that reason, along with many others, it's hard to overstate the constitutional significance of the decision that the British electorate has taken. Dear world, yours, Cambridge. <laughs>